All right, friends, your ride's here, so you've got some um, time. Then you got to roll with Richie Sandani of the Calgary Stampeders. What do you got for him? Richie, uh, the, the feeling is that Calgary doesn't care that much about football. Hockey's number one, no question about it. <laughs> I guess that's the real story there, but do you feel that way? I mean, it, it's still football number one. We're going to be no doubt about it, but not the same scenario in Calgary. I think when you have an enterprise like the NHL you know, floating around in your city, I think naturally people you know, tend to migrate to that but in Calgary I feel like everybody you know it's an entertainment enterprise like I feel like a lot of people uh, come to our games and support us just as well as they do the flames it might be a little bit more with the flames though but I think it's personally I think it's still kind of even now we're gonna we're just talking about the big year it's gonna come up in 2020 eh? mm -hmm. already we see a big a big part of the bombers has gone well I understand you agree to me mm -hmm. that uh, uh, the big guy, what's his name? Willie, Willie, Willie Jefferson yeah, was Willie, signed yeah, yeah. with Miami. Is that correct? Yeah. Did we hear that? So I, th I think I think he was getting a workout, but I do believe that there was there was quite a bit of NFL interest, which doesn't surprise me at all. I thought, you know, he was lost. He shouldn't be in this league. He's you look at him. He's too you know, good. He's too good. <laughs> like you, yeah. you play Madden or you play, I don't know, these video games, you create a player and it is exactly what he would look like. I think he's six Six, six, seven, yeah. two hundred, and whatever in his arms. I'm surprised he's here, actually. I'm surprised. Yeah, I mean, but uh, yeah. that's going to be the thing now. If you have a good team like Calgary did, or like Winnipeg did, yeah. sensational yeah. team in the playoffs, they're going to have a hard time keeping their stars. Yeah, yeah, you will. And you know, like one of the things that I look at is, if, you know, you have you have a good team until February comes around and money's being thrown around and guys are you know looking for their opportunities for their family, which is perfectly fine. But as far as an organization. You have to start from almost from scratch. You know, I think you guys uh, were speaking on that. You know, the turnover from when the team wins a cup to the year after, and you can kind of see it with us. You know, we were a young team. I mean, we. I think what happened is in our locker room, we have like this uh, this rookie show or whatnot, and we kick the rookies out of the room, and then the veterans are all sitting in there, you know, planning what we're going to do. And there were hardly any veterans. You know, we kicked out <laughs> half the room, over half the room. So what happens is after the cup, you know, a lot of guys will go, you know, they have their ring, let's go get the money, let's go take care of our family. And I think that's kind of what's going on in Winnipeg. I kind of expected that. Um, but one of the things that I just wanted to say really quickly is the Rough Riders, in my opinion, look like that team that Winnipeg was heading into the next year. Okay. And I'm competing with them. And so yep. I'm saying something there. Like it's I don't I mean I obviously want to win a cup at home, but that they they are loaded. They are loaded. Well, well and that's that. by the way, but hello Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. Welcome to winning. Calgary and Saskatchewan <laughs> have been going through, through that for a long time. Like well, after 07. So. I know it's getting to be a long time now. Yep. But Lynch, who left? Richie Hall went to the Eskimos. They yep. signed Mo Lloyd. Reggie yep. Hunt went to the Alouettes. Like it that happens yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. when you win. So I don't think that they can cry too much. I'm getting my phone ready for the Lynch walk-off, by the way, because people are writing in now. People can't wait. <laughs> Nelson writes in and he says, former bomber Alex Suber has been named the Red Blacks wide receivers coach. So uh, thank you, Nelson, for that. And speaking of receivers coaches, Richie, your receivers coach moving on and Pete Costanza. Mm -hmm. I've been so jaded from working in this business for so long. I didn't believe the news release. Then I got talking to people. No, it's true. Pete just didn't see any room for advancement with the stamps. He'd been there 13 years. He was your position coach. Yep. And he wanted to try his hand somewhere else. Do you as players... When you see a coach leave or something like that, like get on the phone and say, what's going on? What do you know? Or how did you deal with that when you heard Pete was leaving? So when I heard Pete was leaving, you know, I was quite not like upset, but I was, you know, stunned because personally, Pete, you know, developing me as a player, I think he, he saw something in me when I went for a workout, I think in 2016, I worked out with Craig as well. Uh, Pete, Pete has, Pete has developed me into uh, the player that I want to be. And then from here, I have to take it. Uh, Pete, you know, when he, you know, he texted us and said, hey, like, I'm, we're moving on. We're going into a different direction as a team, and I'm going to go see what I can do and test the waters as well. You know, a lot of the receivers, you know, we've really grown to really love Pete, like as a as a as like almost like an uncle. You know, he's he's a guy that uh, always had our backs, you know, no matter if we had a bad game or a good game. You know, he told us the truth and he always wanted to make us you know, better men before better football players. And. He kept the camaraderie pretty pretty well in the in the offense as far as the receivers go and the running backs and whatnot, and you know I wish him good luck. I don't know you know what transpires for him after leaving us, but I honestly wish him good luck. I hope that you know he he lands where he wants to. Honestly. I could actually sit here for an hour and fire these questions at you now. <laughs> yeah. That I've, I, who would have thought it'd be so welcoming for a Stampeder to come in here? <laughs> <laughs> what did no, you think? No, but hang no, on, Lynch. I'm not done. And <laughs> Lynch, I'll give you yeah. one more. But I'll try. <laughs> tell people about Dinwiddie uh, going to Toronto. Yes. Tell us something about Ryan the person 
and so, the coach. So Ryan, the first thing I'd say is Ryan is one of the most competitive people I've ever been around. There's just about everything is a competition with him, and I think it, it sometimes it can you know stir the pot, but most times it actually like makes you play better. You know, with me, he's always challenged. He's always challenged me as a player. You know, whether I make a catch and go down, you know, or if I don't make a catch, he come up to me and say, "Is that all you got?" You know, I think that's something that Toronto's going to get. They're going to get a guy who is very straight up, who's very honest and very intelligent. Okay, I, I buy all that, <laughs> but there's one thing he doesn't have. Head coaching experience. Right. He's never been a head right. coach. He hasn't even been a, a coordinator. So, And he's going to Toronto, of all places, with uh, under the direction of, of pinball. Ugh, it'd be a tough one, don't you think? You know what? Like, I, this, is, this is kind of alluding to what you're saying, but I, I, I was on YouTube the other day, and I typed in, when Dinwiddie was quarterback here, I typed in a, a, a clip, and you know, I think it was Dinwiddie and a receiver named Baker, and they almost got into like an actual like fight. R.J. Baker would have been. It might have been R.J. Baker, '86. Yeah. yeah, this is 2012 or something. And <laughs> to me, <laughs> to me, you know, like if you ever want like a description of how aggressive he is, that's probably it. Like he's willing to, you know, almost fight on the on the field <laughs> to get, you know, to to deliver for his team. But as far as head coach experience, you know, I think I think uh, personally. It's quite a jump. I don't know much about coaching. I've never been a coach, but I do think from quarterback coach to you know running a whole operations is quite a jump. It'll be interesting to see how that works out with pinball and uh, whoever else is out there. Um, he's very young, obviously, but uh, I honestly think he he has the knowledge, the intelligence. Now it's just to see if he can get the players on his side. Okay, thank you very much. Great talking mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, no worries. All right, Rod, got a hustle. Here there. it is. Get mm -hmm. your phones out, everybody. Right, okay. See you later. <laughs> Been a pleasure, everybody. <laughs> the Lynch walk off. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. You're not Elvis now. <laughs> Thinks he is. Lynch is leaving the building Bye, and Lynch. going to softy lunch yeah. at Boston Pizza South. Thanks, John. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You and too. thank you, John. Merry Christmas. John Lynch has his own driver. How do you like that? <laughs> and his name's John, too. <laughs> Question uh, for you, Richie, from our producer, Clark. Yeah. He says, can you talk about fellow Canadian receivers, Hergi Mayala and Colton Hunchak? And the youth movement in the Canadian core in Calgary, because you will have to correct me or tell me which game was Hergie's breaking out party. Was it against Hamilton? I'm like, what is a Hergie Mayala? I think he had two touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. Talk about these guys. Yeah. So, you know, these young guys, these young cats have come in and they've just from the get go, they were hungry. And, you know, it's interesting with Colton is we kind of have the same upbringing as far as getting into the CFL. I think Colton was the dead last pick and I was second last. And so we kind of played with a little bit of a chip on our shoulder. And that kid, he's picked up the game very fast. You know, he was actually cut initially. And then we brought him back when uh, Julon or Juwan got hurt. We were looking to get Julon Lynch back and he had uh, moved on in his life. So we got Colton. And uh, what's interesting, because I actually got injured as well with my shoulder. So Colton came in and he instantly was producing. But with Hergie, you know, you, you see, you know, kind of this generational talent for Canada. You know, he played in the NCAA. He comes in here, he has pretty much all the tangibles that you would want out of a rookie receiver. Now, the only thing is just how versatile can he be? Can we put him in other positions? Can he learn those positions? And that's something that all, as all receivers and Pete, when he was here, we challenged him to try to learn multiple positions so we can actually get him more involved in the game. And he was involved from wide out, uh, way out at Z, in that position that mostly Canadians dominate in this league. So for me, I think Hergie, I think Hergie will have a breakout year and that's just like clear cut, he will. Um, but the challenge for him is to see what capacity he can he can uh, he can hold in, or what capacity he can uh, have to learn more positions, so we can get the ball to him more. Two last ones for you, Richie. Then we'll sure. let, let you get out of here for yeah. lunch. Pat Delmonico is the new offensive coordinator. Right. What do you expect, if any, changes there? Less targets, less balls <laughs> are in the air. Really? Uh, I mean, no, I'm kidding. I, you know, actually, I don't <laughs> even know. I think uh, I think he's he's a very knowledgeable person. You know, he's got. I think our old line has done better than we give them credit for. Personally, I think our old line, our old line, were all in the same unit. You know, Bo didn't take. He took some hits this year, but I think it was more so when you know kind of on us as receivers you know the hot routes and whatever he's looking for sometimes he has to stand in there a little bit longer take a big hit but i think with pat uh you know i think we'll we can expect balance i think we can expect uh you know more blocking assignments as far as receivers go and honestly hopefully <laughs> a pass game too mm -hmm. so we'll, well you would hope yeah I for hope. sure yeah. well and lastly danny austin was on here from the calgary sun i think it was just yesterday yeah and he said that it was a rebuilding year for as much as Calgary ever has rebuilding years in 2019, right? And think about it. You mm -hmm. lost your your uh, quarterback in defense, Alex Singleton. Yep. You, you mentioned how young that you were. Mm -hmm. 
Well, if that's a rebuild and you end up holding, hosting a home playoff game as it is and double-digit wins, that's not bad. No. But would you – like, is that – nowhere to go but up for you guys what do you expect in 2020 yeah, yeah i think it i think there's nowhere to go but up but you see like like uh they kind of said earlier i think it was craig and um uh frenzy yeah yeah they, they said it like the west is i mean i don't know much about the east the east is as unpredictable as it gets I, I believe but the west you know it's a different level of unpredictable like i feel like the rough riders are right there I, again like they think they, they, they cap first uh winnipeg will still compete I think we're right in there, you know, around the third spot with them. But uh, personally, it's it's still up in the air. I think that this year we 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 don't want to have you know we don't want to repeat the same thing that we did the last year unless it's winning the cup. And I think that's kind of the motto for us. You know, it's only climbing up every single year. Um, it was a rebuilding year, and like you said, we got home a home playoff spot, but we didn't quite know it was a rebuilding year until we until, until you're we in lost. it. <laughs> well, until we right, lost yeah. to Winnipeg, and then we realized, wow, like. You know, this was this was a rebuilding year. You know, next year we got to come back and have our, our mindset on winning the cup in, in Regina. The expectations will always be the same. Yeah. Richie, uh, you welcome here anytime. Hope you sure. enjoyed yourself today. I did. I did. Thanks All right. for having me. Merry Christmas. It. Merry Christmas. Yeah. We're going to bring back our director of scouting, Craig Smith, and Dupes. He's got some news for you all when we return. It's a football Friday on the Rod Peterson Show uh, here on Facebook Live and listen live at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.